The list of the top 25 most WTF stories that happened in the science world. They're crazy, they're gross, but they all teach you something. Let's go into it! <laughs> Number 25, eating grass got kangaroos so high on DMT that they couldn't walk straight. Ooh, wow. This summer, there were all these viral videos of kangaroos in Australia kind of staggering, looking drunk, falling, and jumping erratically. So they looked drunk, but these animals were actually a different kind of intoxicated. They were tripping on DMT. Cause I'm DMT. Which is a psychedelic drug that is found in ayahuasca and sometimes associated with near-death experiences. That's gnarly. <laughs> which they probably consume by eating too much of a grass called Phalaris aquatica. While DMT is usually safe and some form for humans. In kangaroos, it's not all right. Too much of the grass not only makes them bop around like they're drunk, but it also messes up their kidneys and their nervous system. When a kangaroo eats too much Phalaris, it gets the Phalaris staggers, Ooh, which those can don't be sound dangerous, great. especially when they're around humans. Ooh. So number 24, you may know from previous inverse reporting that long ago, ancient humans mated with Neanderthals. And so today, some people have fragments of Neanderthal DNA inside of them. But it wasn't just Neanderthals that ancient humans hooked up with. They also hooked up with Denisovans. Some scientists kind of knew this because in the DNA of Aboriginal people in Australia and Papua New Guinea, they found fragments of Denisovan DNA. In this new study they found is that there was two mating events that happened because people who live in East Asia today also have Denisovan DNA in their bodies. And it's this, maybe you, yes, if you're lucky. It's this fascinating world that we're slowly understanding because we don't quite know what people today get from those DNA fragments. It also means that ancient humans were down to just do it with anything. Okay, number 23 is more ancient human news. This study came out in April. There is these two sites, one in Spain and one in South Africa, where it was previously thought that ancient humans, you know, once their like relative died, they may have placed the bones there and it was like this like purposeful death ritual. Very respectful. Respectful and beautiful. But here's the thing. It actually was pretty messed up. It wasn't just human bones there. There was like monkey bones. Oh, no. and, and now what they think it is, is that it was actually just a pit where predators took their victims, ate them up, and threw them in there. And it's probably a lot of them, especially the Africa one, was like leopards. So it wasn't a charming death cave. Number 22 is really gross. There's Perfect. a rare and nasty STD that made a comeback in the UK, and a lot of media outlets called it a flesh-eating STD. There's a rare case of the infection donovanosis, which leaves victims a rash of angry and smelly ulcers around their groin. Cute. Cute. Fortunately, it only affected one victim, who is unnamed. This is a very rare disease. There are certain hot spots around the world Papua New Guinea, South Africa, some parts of Australia, some parts of India and Brazil. But in the United States, it is pretty rare. So donovanosis is caused by infection with a bacteria called Klebsiella granulomatis. So hard to say, but I want to say it. Klebsiella granulomatis. Ooh. And if you don't treat this infection, you sometimes get red bumps around your anus and or large sores that the CDC refers to as having a beefy red appearance. Beefy. And they smell bad. So the reason this was called flesh-eating disease by so many media outlets was because the ulcers are basically open sores that kind of look like your f flesh is being eaten, but it's really not the same thing. So it's not that extreme. Charming. Number 21, an enormous swarm of starlings eclipsed the sky over Rome. So there's this really scary photo that surfaced on Reddit of the sky over Rome and it looked like TV static. It turns out it was just so many birds, a specific kind of bird known as a starling. And so starlings are actually a big problem in Rome because they fly through the city every year coming from Eastern Europe onto warmer climates. And while they're in Rome, they poop everywhere. And the nasty thing about their poop is that because these starlings hang out in the olive groves, their poo is really oily, and so it rains all over the city, and tourists slip on it, and people slip on it, and it smells, and it's just so bad that Rome had to get falcons to chase them away. What the fuck? <laughs> Number 20, what the fuck moment that happened with liverwort. Liverwort is a type of plant, and within the liverwort family is this one called radula. 
people people already drink Redula tea because like they're like it kind of makes me feel like I'm getting high. Scientists in October were like, well, let's actually figure that out. There's a specific molecule in it that's extremely similar to THC, and while THC causes some aspects of inflammation in the brain, this molecule doesn't. So they wonder if this Redula liverwort plant could potentially be like a safer version of medical marijuana. I'm here for it. WTF, but also nice. Number 19 is super crazy. Human mini brains implanted in mice integrated with their animal hosts. Mini brains sound crazy enough. It's pretty crazy. So in April, scientists planted mini human brains inside mice and the brains integrated with the mouse body. Someday, scientists hope that we can grow organs inside other animals and farm them to replace our dying body parts. So they just want to see if it works. Can you grow a human body part inside a mouse? And it turns out you can. And well, we don't know if there's any impact on consciousness, <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. WTF. 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 An Oklahoma teen changed the rules of chemistry. What? Yeah, this kid is so nuts. His name is George Wang. He's a casual Oklahoma high school junior. He learned in school that carbon can form four bonds. We all learned this in organic chemistry. Sometimes situations can get kind of crazy and you can get five bonds. And then the teacher was like, hey, do you think it could make six bonds or seven bonds? And so this kid goes away for the summer, does an independent study, comes back with evidence for his teacher. And the teacher was like, WTF? And they got it published in a, in a journal. Teens. Good old teens. Number 17. In May, United States Army surgeons announced they grew an ear in someone's arm. WTF? Well, backstory is that in 2016, a U.S. Army private was in this gnarly car accident, but luckily she was okay, save for the fact that she lost an ear. Mm -mm. So what the U.S. Army did was grow her a new one, and it was made from cartilage from her own ribs, sculpted into an ear shape, implanted under the skin in her arm, and then grew to be an ear. And what's really cool is because it's made from cells from her own body, she won't need to take the anti-rejection drugs that other typical transplant recipients have to take for the rest of their lives. And if you want to see a picture of it, and you should, go to inverse.com. Number 16 is a blast from the past, maybe the worst part of 2018. Who remembers the Laurel versus Yanny meme? I hated it. I hated it so much. It was a terrible meme, kind of like the dress illusion, but not quite like the dress. Because some people heard Laurel, some people heard Yanny, and some people could hear both. And so he talked to a linguist, what was the sound actually saying? And he said, it really depends on how you perceive the frequencies in the sound bite. Some people hear it, it only sounds like two frequencies, other people hear three frequencies, and that's what determines whether you hear Laurel or Yanny. So you've probably heard about Viagra, which helps with erectile dysfunction. But what you may not have heard is that it can one day be used to treat cancer, WTF. So basically what happened is that they genetically engineered these mice to grow polyps. And basically these mice that were given Viagra had the number of um, the cell clumps just cut in half. Wow. And that means that one day Viagra has the possibility of treating colorectal cancer. WTF, this year teens started snorting condoms and doctors were so mad about it. They should be. This was a crazy phase where teens were snorting condoms at one nostril, and the way you win the challenge is if you snort it so hard that it comes out through your throat and you can pull it out of your mouth. That's so horrible. It's very bad, and we talked to a doctor who was like, so many bad things can happen if you do that. The craziest one, the worst case scenario, is if you snort the condom, and instead of coming out through your throat, it comes down through the wrong pipe and into your lungs, oh, no. where you can suffocate because you don't have... What a horrible way to go. WTF. And then belongs. <laughs> so I'm glad that challenge is over. Yeah, WTF teens. Mm -mm. Number 13, giant hogweed WTF. Okay, this type of plant was brought to the United States in 1917 as like an ornamental plant. It's they, cute. It grows 14 feet in the air. Wow, so big. But here's the thing. It burns your flesh with its sap. And it's so noxious that it could actually cause permanent blindness. It's an invasive species. It's now spreading around the United States. And it was in the news this July because the 17 year old, once again, a 14 on this WTF list, was doing some landscaping and he briefly brushed, quote, 
a rogue stalk of giant hogweed with his face and arms. And what this awful plant did was give him third degree burns. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a bad plant, WTF. The kilogram died. For over a hundred years, the kilogram was based on the international prototype of the kilogram, which is basically a cylinder of platinum and iridium that was stored in the super fancy, super high security cell in France. This is the kilogram, and all other kilograms in the world were measured against this physical object. But this year, scientists were like, we don't want to rely on a physical object anymore. Physical objects change. Old news. Everything's transient. And so they voted to change the over a century old definition of a kilogram to be based on not a physical object, but a universal constant called Planck's constant. This is some crazy quantum mechanics thing that we have to measure using a machine called the Kibble Balance. And so from now on, we will determine the mass of a kilogram, not by measuring weight, but by measuring the electromagnetic force between two plates. R.I.P. Kilogram. Number 11, Mona Lisa was depressed. Mm. Famous painting, her sad girl smile was always so enigmatic. People were like, wow, so beautiful, but so sad, what's going on? A doctor that we talked to this year spent a lot of time looking at this painting and realized, okay, she's not just sad, there's also a lot of other stuff going on. First of all, her hair is thinning. She has no eyebrows. Her eyeballs are kinda yellow. Her eyes are also kinda bulgy. She has a lump on her hand and a bump on her eye, and he looked at all of these symptoms and it's like, this woman has clinical hypothyroidism, which is basically when your thyroid doesn't work. Then he looked into the records and it seems to be a fairly common illness in Italy at that time and even in some parts now. One of the saddest symptoms of hypothyroidism is that you kind of get depressed. And he's oh. like, I think she's just sad because she's Mona Lisa. Sick. Mona Lisa. Bummer. Bummer. There's a contact lens lodged in your eye and it's been there for 28 years i hate that i have to be the one to tell you this but in august this woman she's 42 she lives in the united kingdom she's like ow my eye there's a bump here and i can't imagine why this would be happening to me because basically <laughs> our lady she sounds fun she's an active woman she was playing badminton she got hit in the eye and her, and she's like, now I can't see in this eye. I'm assuming that my contact lens popped out. I've done that. I think most people who wear contacts have. The thing is, it didn't pop out. It just went to the back and eventually came to the front and she had to go to the doctor because she had a cyst. And it just teaches you, you gotta be really careful of the contacts because they give you the gift of sight, but they could really F you up. WTF. WTF. I hate that. Yeah, I hate it so much. Yeah, this one's nice. This is a good vibes WTF. <laughs> Number nine, archaeologists found the world's oldest cheese. Delicious. Yeah. So there was a guy in the 13th century BCE named Ptanes. He was a high-ranking official who, when he died, got a nice burial. And it seems that the people who loved him and buried him decided, we're going to bury this guy with some cheese. That's the way I want to go, too. Cheddar? Mmm, halloumi. Classy. Thank you. When this guy's tomb was discovered, scientists found a jar, and inside there was this lumpy white thing in it. And for a long time, no one knew what it was, but this is the year chemists finally did some analysis on it, and they look at the proteins in this white creamy stuff and discover that it's cheese. Hey. And it's not just any cheese. It's a mixed milk cheese, sheep and goat, which hmm. makes it a little bit like a camembert of cabrales. Beautiful. Delicious. Probably tangy. I eat it. I'd do it. Sure. WTF. WTF. One of my favorite stories this year is number eight on the WTF list, and it's all about wombat poop. So we've known that wombats have very special poop because it comes out in cubes and no other animal on earth poops out cubes. Yeah, because that sounds like it hurts. It sounds like it hurts, but the wombats like it because for them it's important. They poop out their cubes and then they have terrible eyesight and then they use the poop cubes and they make walls around their houses. Well, they're, they're like burrow dens and they communicate through like olfaction. So they like, it's through scent. Squares are really rare. They, in, in nature, like they don't come up out normally. Like we usually like carve things to make squares. And the only two examples scientists can think of are the very top of a seahorse tail 
before it curves. And then wombat poop. While we've known that they've had cute poop, they didn't know why. Like, how could they be making this poop? And what scientists learned is that it's not the hole from which who comes from that makes the shape. It's all the stuff that happens beforehand. Due to the varying elastic properties of the intestinal wall tissue, and it also has to do with the amount of water that's in the feces. It changes into a liquid solid state in the last 25% of the intestine, and then in the last 8% of the intestine, it turns into a cube and it pops right out. WTF, I love it. But the hole isn't a square. No, it just goes, the square is the, the whole I don't need to do it with my hands. It's already shaped when it comes out. It's not being morphed by its receptacle. It's not like a play doh situation. Got it. Yeah. WTF. Number seven makes me really mad at Gwyneth Paltrow in particular. She was all about bee acupuncture on her website Goop. So bee acupuncture, also known as apitherapy, is basically when you get stung by bees on purpose to relieve a variety of illnesses and stress and all that kind of stuff. It really doesn't help. But anyway, one of Goop's many followers, this poor woman, started getting apitherapy treatment and she was doing it every four weeks over a period of two years and was fine for a while. The bee stings, which are very painful, weren't causing her any sort of allergic reactions. But the body changes, and one day she got such a bad allergic reaction that she started wheezing and her breathing became labored, and then eventually she lost consciousness and she died. The sad thing is, there's so much medical literature out there saying happy therapy is bad, and it doesn't work. Gwyneth, for the love of God, read a paper. WTF. WTF. Number six on this WTF list. Yo, it's gnarly. <laughs> So basically, the news came out in January because the doctor that treated the patient was on a talk show. But basically, he had this patient come in. He lives in Southern California. And one day, this patient was going to the bathroom. And he was like, checking out what was going on down there because things didn't feel quite right. And what he did is see a little bit of a tapeworm coming out of his rectum. And he pulled it out and he wrapped it around an empty toilet paper roll and he went to the doctor with his How new friend. How long was this new friend? It was five feet long. Oh my god. <laughs> it was five feet long. No. But yeah, he, he went to the doctor. He's like, here's the five foot long tapeworm that's been living inside of me. And the doctor's like, WTF, how did that happen? And the man's like, the only thing I can think of is that every day I eat salmon sashimi. Like, it's like a beautiful lifestyle to be able to afford to eat salmon sashimi every single day for lunch. But sometimes the consumption of raw fish, if it's coming from a poor source, can lead to the gestation of a tapeworm. And basically this tapeworm was in this dude's body for six months and then he pooped it out. <laughs> Here we are today talking about it. That's our job. <laughs> so, WTF. WTF. Number five. Number five is super wild. Turns out there's a high concentration of psychopaths in Washington, D.C. Okay. Scientists wanted to point out, this is a preliminary paper, so it hadn't yet been peer reviewed, but he took data from a lot of other studies to estimate the psychopathic levels in population by state. Most importantly, he used a study of big five personality traits and another unpublished study showing how to estimate psychopathy from those traits. Cool, that's the groundwork. His analysis gave us a list of the states with the highest concentrations of psychopaths. Here we go. Number one, Washington, D.C. Number two, Connecticut. Number three, California. What, what? Number four, New Jersey. There is a tie for fifth between New York and Wyoming. Lowest concentrations of psychopaths were in West Virginia, Vermont, Tennessee, North Carolina, and New Mexico. These findings, while, you know, still preliminary, were in line with this ongoing theory that prominence of or closeness to large urban centers appears to have a high correspondence with psychopaths. It checks out. The scientists wanted to make it clear that this paper doesn't show causality, which is to say a person isn't a psychopath just because they live in a certain state, just that psychopaths tend to congregate in certain places. Steer clear of DC. Not hard to do. Not hard to do. Wait, so yeah. big dicks are bad. Bad. Yes. They're bad for Ostracods. 
sexual dimorphism is why male and female species often look and act differently. That's why peacocks have big, beautiful plumages. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So basically they found that ostracods that lived millions of years ago, and ostracods are like small shrimp-like crustaceans. Basically the extinction rates for big digged ostracods <laughs> were 10 times higher than the other members of their species who invested less into having large genitals. Hypothetically, you'd be like, oh, well, you know, isn't isn't life about reproduction and like, wouldn't like a bigger dick mean more sperm? Um, you know, you think it's gonna help you survive, but that they didn't invest in the other things that help you stay alive, like, you know, adapting to environmental threats, you know, maybe giving your mom a call once in a while. No, um, but basically <laughs> there's, there's, there's more to life than just reproduction is basically what this study teaches you. And these big dick ostracads died. And this year we found out. We don't know if the same is for humans though. Yeah, we don't know. Time will tell. Time will tell. WTF. A mummy that, oh my God, it's so crazy. <laughs> the mummy's curse has got mummy. you. <laughs> Number three is so crazy. A mummy mistaken for a hawk for many, many, many years was actually a mummy of a human baby. So there's this mummy in ancient Egypt that people for a long time thought it was a hawk mummy because it had really nice linen and papyrus wrappings and its wrappings were pretty special so they thought maybe it was a religious votive, something like that. And it's been at the UK Maidstone Museum for a very long time. But this year, scientists actually used a micro CT scan to look through those wrappings without damaging the mummy. And upon a closer inspection, they discovered it is not a hawk, it is just a malformed human baby, which is actually super sad. Yeah. So what they found out is it's actually a fetus somewhere between 23 and 28 weeks old that had been stillborn. And it had a rare congenital disorder called encephaly, which gave it a um, underdeveloped brain, which is why this mummy was so strange looking to begin with. You know, the scientists don't want this to discount the importance of this mummy. They think because it was a, probably such a tragic moment for this family to give birth to this very strange looking individual that it was probably a really sad and really special moment and so they gave it a special burial. That's nice. That is nice. They gave MDMA to a creature that's not very social at all. An octopus. MDMA, casually known as a party drug, is known to elicit pro-social behavior in mammals. We see that in mice, we see that in humans, and that's why it's such a promising route for um, PTSD therapy once it's paired with MDMA. That's a, a whole different world of psychology and science that's being explored. Scientists wanna know exactly why MDMA causes pro-social behavior and why the brain's even capable of pro-social behavior in the first place. Octopuses are loners. They're like, I'm doing my own thing under this rock. Please don't touch me. In the experiment, they were in these different boxes and they had these, like they had doorways in the boxes and they could like move if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Sans MDMA, they're like, no, I'm in my box. With the MDMA, they came out of the box and the researcher said it was like watching an eight armed hug. Suddenly these animals, these invertebrates, whose brains are completely different than ours, structured in a totally different way, were acting like humans do when they receive MDMA. What scientists have known for a bit is that the California two-spot octopus contains a serotonin transporter that enables the binding of the MDMA. But the idea is that over time, they've evolved to not experience the part of serotonin that actually makes them become social. And receiving the MDMA triggered that ancient serotonin in their brains and they suddenly became social. But yeah, the experiment may sound pretty WTF, giving octopuses MDMA, but it teaches us a lot about the evolution of brains and what the potential of MDMA is for humans. Pretty cool. Plastic surgeons are grappling with the newest request and it's called Snapchat dysmorphia. Our last WTF story of 2018 pretty much sums up how WTF this year has been. It's a doozy. It's a doozy. Plastic surgeons all across America are starting to notice that when people come in asking for a change in their looks, what they're asking for is to look how they do in a Snapchat filter. So more often than not, that means big eyes, narrow chin, very symmetrical face. The surgeons are worried because this is 
just a totally unrealistic expectation of what people should actually look like because Snapchat is not real life, guys. They're starting to classify Snapchat dysmorphia as a type of general body dysmorphia, which is when you're upset and unsatisfied with the way that you look and it becomes a sort of obsession. What's different between, you know, bringing in a photo of Ariana Grande and being like, I want to look like Ariana Grande and bringing in a snapshot of what you look like with the dough filter on is that the dough filter is just a reflection of what you look like. And so it sets very unrealistic expectations for what the person thinks they can be. And this is problematic and this, the doctors don't know what effect this can have on you know these very young people somewhere down the line if they keep wanting to look like this. And in one study in 2017, 55% of surgeons saw patients who came in and said they wanted to look better in their selfies. Guys, Snapchat is over, filters out, you're beautiful the way you are. Let's make 2019 better. Woohoo.